Consider now uh, nobody's favourite character from Toy Story, Mr. Potato Head. So Mr. Potato Head Bucket has various different body parts and accessories. And let's say that this bucket has three possible sets of feet, two possible noses, three possible hats, two possible mouths, two possible pairs of eyes, two possible pairs of ears, and five possible accessories. We can now start to think that if we had to have exactly one from each category, so we don't want him to have uh, two different sets of feet at the same time, we don't want him to have zero feet, that exactly one from each category is used, then how many configurations of the toy are there? Well, this is solved by a simple multiplication, a uh, multiplicative rule, which basically says that there are three choices of the feet. And in this picture, it's the green shoes, the blue shoes, or the orange bare feet, and so on. For each of those, there's two choices of nose. So I've got three sets of feet I can choose multiplied by two noses if I'm only looking at feet and nose combinations. If I include hats, there's three times as many options, so I have to multiply by three. So overall, each new category that I need exactly one item from, there's two items in that category, then I double the number of options. I double because I could have with option one or with option two, so I have twice as many. There's three, I've got three times as many. So in this case, I would just simply have the product of how many choices I have to pick one item from in each case. So here, for this Mr. Potato Head problem, I would have three feet times two noses times three hats times two for mouths and so on. And in this case, I find there would be 720 different configurations of Mr. Potato Head from this bucket. We now consider a slightly more complicated case. For the Mr. Potato Head situation, I had to pick one set of feet, one nose, one hat, and so on, where I had to pick one element from each of these sets. Here we consider the case we have to pick from either one set or another, but not both. So picking from set A or set B, but not both. So for the Mr. Potato Head example, this would be the number of configurations where he either has a hat or shoes, but not both. I'll start with the simpler case where the two sets are disjoint. So there's nothing when I'm picking an element from set A or set B, but not both. I'll assume that the elements in A are totally distinct from the elements in B. There is no element in both sets. What we saw before was if I wanted to pick an element from A, there was simply the cardinality of A, ways to do that. If I wanted to pick an element from the set B, there was the cardinality of B, ways to do that. So if I have to pick either an A or a B, but not both, then I just simply have the cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B ways to pick one element from either A or B. And one way to think of that is through the union of sets. If I created the set A union B, that would be everything in A and everything in B in one combined set. There is no overlap of the set, so there's no element I'd have to remove due to double counting. And so the cardinality of A union B would be the cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B. So that gives us the number of ways to pick something from A or pick something from B, but not both. Now that's the, the easier case, which is when they're disjoint. 
The argument gets a bit more complicated when there is some overlap. We can now consider the more complicated case where the sets that we're selecting from are not disjoint. An example of this would be, say, somebody is conducting a survey of people's hot drink consumption. So we don't know at this stage how many people are surveyed, but we do know that of the people who responded, 70 of them said they'd drunk coffee the previous day. When asked, 40 people said they'd drunk tea the previous day. So I want to know how many people have drunk a hot drink of either tea or coffee, or potentially both, the previous day. Well, the honest fact is I can't answer this at this stage, because it could be as high as 110. If the 70 coffee people had no tea, the 40 tea people had no coffee, if there's no overlap in the sets, then I could have as many as 70 plus 40. And that's the same result I would have got for the case where I assumed the sets were disjoint. But of course, it could be that the sets overlap quite a lot. In fact, the largest overlap of a set of 70 and a set of 40 is everybody who had tea, the 40 people who had tea, all had coffee as well. And if that were the case, then in fact, I would have all of the 40 within the 70, so I could have only have 70 people had a hot drink. So all I can say from the information here is that the number of people who had a hot drink was somewhere between 70 and 110. But I can't answer the exact size without knowing some more information. So if I know the number of responders, for example, then I can start to figure out um, how these sets overlap. Let's say that I know that 20 people had both types of drink and 100 people responded. That's two more bits of information. So what this means is the count of 70 coffee drinkers and 40 tea, 20 people were in fact double counted, they were in both lists. But the 70 coffee drinkers would be 50 uniquely coffee drinkers and 20 coffee and tea drinkers. And the set of 40 tea drinkers would be 20 uniquely tea drinkers and 20 tea and coffee drinkers. So what this might be screaming out in your mind right now is Venn diagram. And again, we do have a previous video on Venn diagrams to go back to if you're not sure. But here is how I would represent that information. You can see that my totals, 50 plus 20 plus 20 plus 10, adds up to the 100 people who responded. There's 70 in the coffee circle, 50 plus 20. There's 40 in the tea, 20 plus 20. So in fact, I would know that 10 people had neither, 20 people had both, 50 uniquely had coffee, 20 uniquely had tea. So the number of people who had at least one of the types of hot drink, tea, or coffee, or both, would be 50 plus 20 plus 20. Or I can think of that as the size of the coffee drinkers plus the size of the tea drinkers sets minus the amount that I've double counted, minus the overlap. And that leads into the inclusion-exclusion principle, which we can see in the following video.